All righty. Um, hello, everybody. Like it's been forever. Um, you guys know where you're at. I know where I'm at. Uh, it's the 2K podcast. And I'm your host. I'm, I'm the ribster guy. Um, okay, so I didn't do a podcast last week. Uh, I've been playing a lot of 2K video games in general. You know, you know how it be. But uh, end of this week, I thought, well, I, I guess I better do another episode. There's a there's a few listeners out there that uh, actually enjoy this podcast, and um, that's all I need to to get by with making a few more episodes here and there. So um, I am actively looking for guests. Uh, 2K developers, 2K anybody, uh, content creators, up and comers, uh, people with knowledge in the pro am scene, maybe some 2K league players. Who knows? Uh, anybody who uh, gives me the time of day with some credibility, uh, I will try to get them on for next week's episode. Uh, okay, so let's get right into it here. Uh, <clears throat> Late last night, I made a tweet about uh, certain certain toxic toxicity going on, and um, I will share that, to, that tweet with you guys. So let's go back to the beginning. Uh, in twenty in twenty twenty three, well, this year, duh. I mean, September thirteenth, as you can see here, if you're watching the pod, uh, September thirteenth. 13th, I made this tweet about, um, you know, Mike Wang in the community and um, how if we were just a little bit more aware of what we write online, we'd have a lot more 2K devs willing to communicate. And uh, when I said that, I, you know, I, I meant that obviously that, you know, you show some gratitude, appreciation for these people who don't have to do this. Like they have a job. They don't. And their job is not to go on Reddit and talk to people. That's that's my job. <laughs> my job is a volunteer job. And you would much rather listen to these people than to listen to me. So we were just paying attention just a, a little bit more of what we say and how we talk. Um, we would have not just Mike Wang, who's the gameplay director, but we would have, you know, other developers or just there would be more um uh what's the word I'm looking for? The ambiance would be uh better for um more people of higher status or you know of, of more knowledge to come and interact with the community and be a part of the community, to ask more questions, to give more answers even. But, um, so that was September 13th. And then I, um, I did this, this tweet, I made this tweet last night where I was just talking about how, you know, just a reminder, basically, just to reiterate what I said on the 13th. You know, it's meant to be cool when 2K engages with the community. Some of you would rather be toxic, and that ruins potential discourse for everyone involved. So, what does this mean exactly? Well, you guys know I'm the moderator. I'm the lead mod over at NBA 2K and my team subreddits. Uh, if you don't know what a subreddit is, uh, think of it as like um, a forum community type of thing. But think of it as, like, massive, because NBA 2K has over half a million subscribers or followers. I don't really know what to call them there on Reddit. And then my team is... It, honestly, it'd be cool if my team reached 100K by end of this year cycle, the, the, this 2K cycle. But as of right now, they're at over 50,000 over there. So there's a lot of people, you know, it's a lot of passionate people. Um... But for some reason, this year, uh, you know, our community has not made it easy or made it uh, pleasant to uh, communicate with. 
And um, it's gotten to the point so fast, because we're still in September. It, it is end of September, but we're still in September. It's gotten to the point where, you know, it's right now, you know, 2K is, if they see some of the comments that I can't even show you on the pod, um, if they seem, if they, if they see and if they have seen some of these comments, um, you know, I put myself in their shoes. I wouldn't want to be here. I wouldn't want to talk to these people. I wouldn't want to interact with these people because, um, and you know, look, uh, and I've said this to my staff on Reddit. Uh, I've said this to them. I said, look, I'm all for allowing the community to be critical and even blunt about certain things involving 2k but it now it's gotten to the point where we're attacking the individuals behind the game like the developers and like like personally because you know they've been on reddit we we know what their reddit names are and there's people calling out these people and and making just insane remarks that i can't even comprehend how you know, people think to say this stuff, or maybe they don't think at all, and that's part of the problem. But um, you know, it's it's been tough. I, I would say the last, you know, the last two weeks or so, um, because there is also a fine line with the moderation. Of course, if if anything, if it's breaking the rules, we want it removed. Regardless of who it's aimed at, if it's breaking the NBA 2K rules or the Reddit, the Reddit cat, which is the Reddit rules, we remove it. But there are a lot of posts just of, of criticizing and they don't quite meet that criteria of breaking the rules. But at the same time, they're done in such a way where it's like, you know, it's it's so rude. And I don't remove those posts because, you know, then then I'm seen as a shill and uh as a 2k sympathizer and whatnot and like i said criticizing is okay you know if that's how a lot of you are, are feeling and you want to criticize the game it's okay to do it in a civil manner where it we're not taking shots at people and uh you know calling developers out or whoever else it's not just developers it's just 2k people in general people we don't know um we need to do better with that. And uh, my tweet last night got, got a little bit of attention. So that's good. Uh, hopefully that attention translates over to Reddit. Um, I have told my team to be, you know, a little bit more thorough with, with the moderations and just, just to try to help out, you know, clean up a lot of what's said. And hey, a lot of what's said that's bad is also about the, the mods, right? There's a lot of... Uh, now, I, I've learned to not take that uh, personally, but, uh, you know, because I'm around the community all day, but, you know, somebody who has a job and they're working so hard on the game or, um, you know, they're working or like around the game, like uh, the community stuff, maybe may at 2K and, um, you know, they get a notification on Reddit and then they come to check it out and they see that it's, you know, somebody... Uh, telling them that they should get whooped or something, uh, which has has been an actual post by somebody like that. That is just it. Just doesn't help anybody, and I wish we would do better about that stuff. And um, hopefully, um, hopefully from from here on out, because uh, this podcast is being uploaded on Friday, so hopefully from here on out, going into October. We don't uh, see as much of this, hopefully. And I can kind of, you know, I'm going to have to moderate a little bit, a little bit tougher, I guess. Because, um, uh, like, I love the interaction with 2K coming to our subreddits. They don't have to do that. But I love that, you know, they, in, they get involved with the community, which, you know, it's a very passionate community. A lot of Redditors come here every day to the NBA 2K uh, subreddit or even the My Team subreddit and they're they're chilling, they're making posts or making comments or reading stuff. And, you know, how cool if you're like a regular to see 
you know, 2K people in there. Like, that shows that they care. And we just take, we take a lot of that for granted, and I wish we didn't. So, that's all I gotta say on that. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, um, something that I see a lot every year, uh, and I guess I want to mention it now, 2K patches, so, or 2K updates, whatever you want to call them, uh, whenever they come into the game, uh, after the game's release, and then they change things around here and there. Are they update things? Um, that's what I'm uh, referring to with with when I say a patch or an update. And um, let's talk about specifically, you know, what do they change in the patches? Well, they tell you what they change in the patches. Um, and if they don't... Uh, that would be called like a, a ninja, a ninja patch, um, or something of similar wording. But for them to do a ninja patch, um, it would have to be something not quite important. And what I'm specifically talking about is how many people say that, you know, oh, 2K changed my jumper, 2K changed my jumper. With every patch, and there has to be some like psychological phenomena behind this because, you know, Mike Wang, the gameplay director, he's come out over and over again over the years saying we did not change shooting, we did not change shooting, and to this day, end of September, the only thing they've changed is something to do with the post hooks. When specifically talking about shooting, um. They have not changed anything else. People always talk and tweet and, and whatever about changes in the shots. And I just, I get confused because, um, like, how does that happen exactly? So there's a, there's a patch. We go into the game and then maybe we don't shoot well. So then we blame it on the patch saying that they changed shooting. So what if there was no patch? Then are we saying that if there was no patch, then we'd still be shooting well? Is that is is this is this really? <laughs> um, I don't know it. I don't understand it. I really, it's not like I'm buddy buddy with with Mike Wang and everything, but I really believe if they changed something like shooting, like the timing of the shot or a certain jump shot got, uh, you know, slightly tweaked or whatever, that they would they would mention it. It would have to, because people would be wondering if shooting has been hatched or changed in any way. So, like, I'm looking at the most recent patch notes for version 1.3, came out September 24th, so last Sunday. And in terms of gameplay changes, you know, there's perimeter defense uh, coverage. Uh, they tighten it up to to reduce uh, what is a ghost contest, and if you don't know what a ghost contest is, uh, it's basically uh, when you shoot the ball and you think you think you're wide open, it's a clean shot, open shot, and then it's like a thirty five percent covered, uh, like a yellow contest or even sometimes red contest, and the defender is nowhere near you, or you know so you think in your screen anyway. That's a ghost con contest in the uh, in the most basic generalization of the definition. Um, they also increased the make window of open meter dunks, so making open meter dunks a little easier, which I think is fine. And then there's a few other fixes for you know uh, stability, functionality, and whatnot, but nothing to do with jump shot changes and. Right now, and I don't know what it, I don't know why, I don't know, maybe some of those stability changes, and this is actually, this reminds me, the only thing that I believe could change your shot is 
Well, st a stability patch that's so significant that the latency in the game for your shot, like, changes. So they didn't change the shot directly or the jump shot directly or the, the timing of it directly, but I guess indirectly it affected it. I can see that being a thing. I can actually believe that. However, um, I still... I still would hope, at least, I would think that 2K would include something like that in the patch notes where uh, due to stability fixes, uh, the jump shot timing has been whatever by however many milliseconds. Um, maybe there's uh, like slight variations where they don't mention it because it's such a tiny difference, but maybe you notice that because you, you know your jump shot so well. So maybe, maybe everybody's half right and half wrong about things. Um, but I did want to talk about how every time there's a patch and people go back on 2K, even though the patch is about nothing of what they're talking about, everybody's talking how the, the, oh, this is the jumper now after this patch. Oh, this is not the jumper after this patch. This jumper doesn't work anymore. And it's like, it, where do you see that? Where do you see that? I should also note, I guess while I'm talking about the patch notes, the, mo the most recent patch notes, I should also note there is a developer note in here, and I'm going to read it because it's important. We are continuing to work towards resolving the most user-impacting issues being reported. The team is currently working on an all-encompassing patch that we'll be releasing in early to mid-October. That patch will contain fixes and improvements spanning the entire game, including a number of community reported items that required a long, longer internal testing runway. So, I guess uh, there's going to be a significant patch early to mid October. So, I'm going to say second week of October, maybe early on second week, or end of first week, like a Sunday. The same way they released the patch notes uh, last Sunday. Maybe. We'll see. But that's good. So let's not, uh, let's not uh, you know, go crazy here with these patches. Because I think these are good. Th there's good fixes to the game. And it's not just on Twitter, but on Reddit. People are talking, oh, they nerfed this and they nerfed that. They haven't nerfed anything. The only thing that they've touched is whatever's in the, the patch notes, and what's in the patch notes is completely fine for them to fix. Like tightening up perimeter defense coverage, or increasing the, the window size of open meter dunks. What's the issue with this? I really don't understand. And if I go back to the other patch note, so the, the patch note before this, which came out on the 20th, there were no gameplay updates. There were literally no gameplay patches. So, what are we doing here? Right? What are we doing? Um, Let's just take the game as it is. And let's take the updates as they are. And let's not make up... Uh, you know, blame, blaming patches for... Um, maybe you're shooting a little worse this time, you know? Maybe... Uh, Maybe you're struggling a little bit and you need a new jumper. Maybe you've needed a new jumper this whole time and you were just hitting them until the patch and then the patch gave you, uh, I don't know. Made you think, made you think uh, other things. So, another thing I want to talk here about, uh, it's been it's been kind of hot. I don't know if you guys have been seeing this, but people have been saying that acceleration does not matter this year. Acceleration does not matter this year. Well, if I could find the video uh, of um, was it? I'm assuming it was Two K Lab. If I could find the acceleration video where 
Um, oh, I can't exactly find it from the source that I was looking for, but I just want to show you guys this video anyway. So, if you're watching on the podcast, I am currently showing you uh, dribbling from, you know, over 90 acceleration and dribbling from 70 acceleration. 71 acceleration. So let's let's break this down because this is actually causing people to make new builds like instantly. Uh the sample size in this video is three seconds. And that is in fact the sample. It's uh too small of a uh of a clip for us to look at this and take this as complete fact over acceleration not mattering at all when it comes to uh, low acceleration or high acceleration what you're looking at is um one move right and what you're looking at is the uh the animation into a speed boost but it's the same animation it's what you would consider the left right animation i guess this year um into a speed boost and um, this particular animation, maybe, you know, uh, yeah, doesn't require that much acceleration. But there should be other tests with other animations. Um, and maybe other just, doesn't have to be uh, dribbling animations, just animations in general. Let's see if the players run with the acceleration. Um, you know, things like that, because this, and it's, I find this so fascinating how the 2k community can see the, the three second video that I'm showing you right now, and they're making new builds because they see this and they're calling it, oh, acceleration does not matter. This is one move. This is one move with the ball and it's three seconds. Look, Let's say, let's say, and let's say acceleration actually doesn't matter. Let's say maybe there's a bug and, uh, you know, let's say it does not matter. You don't think that they would patch it? They would update it if there was something wrong with it? You know what I mean? And uh, I do want to point out, Mike Wang did say acceleration is only used for first steps from a dead stand. The sequence in the video that you just saw, it would be using speed with ball as a deciding attribute and not acceleration. Would you look at that? So now imagine if Mike never replied. Imagine if people just... Imagine actually how many people already made new builds based on the video that they did not see. They did not see uh, Mike Wang's tweet, right? We, we as a community, in the 2K community specifically, we need to do better at taking in information. We consume information uh, uh, with, without any credibility any any checking of uh you know uh of anything actually there's no checking of anything we just take it from for whatever people say it's what it is and we we move on with that information why i don't understand why do we do that as a community in in a 2k community anyway so if you've seen that video or if you've heard people say acceleration does not matter, tell them acceleration is used for first steps from a dead point. Okay? So that's when you're not moving and then you decide to move right away. Acceleration will be used. The sequence in the video with the dribbling uses speed with ball. It doesn't use acceleration. Okay? Okay. And, uh, I think, I think that's about it for this week. 
Um, I want to shout out to you, the listeners who, uh, you know, I, I find it interesting that you guys enjoy this podcast and I'm sure I could do a little bit better job. Um, Maybe with guests, I've noticed I've had one guest in all my episodes so far. And that one episode with the one guest completely broke all my numbers from all the other episodes. So maybe, I guess, the um, the success um, point for my podcast would be to, to have more guests. So I will try to do that for next week's episode. Hopefully I can get somebody... I don't want to just force people on here. I want to get somebody that would be interested in in talking with me about 2K and um, current issues and current things that they like and whatever else uh, we can think of. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here this week. And uh, I will see you on the next one.